motion, you always want to give some over pressure. So you make sure that they're actually at the end of the range. Also, a lot of the um, impingements in terms of the AC joint, if the patient brings both arms up here and stops, it can look symmetrical, right? But if you take them to that end range, they might not be symptomatic until you get them there. So what I'm going to have you do first, Kelly, is I want you to just raise your arms straight up as high as you can go. So what you'll do then is just give her a little bit of overpressure. So my hand is right at the back of the glenohumeral joint, and I'm just overpressing from the elbow, asking for any symptom provocation with that. And I'm just making sure that it's equal bilaterally, okay? Now, next thing I want you to do, Kelly, is bring both of your hands out to the side like this. Good, you're gonna raise them all the way up toward your ears. I'm also gonna overpress here a little bit. Okay, and if I'm behind the patient, I'm gonna ask, did that reproduce your symptoms if I can't see her grimacing, okay? Next, what I want you to do is interlace your fingers, bring them behind your head. So for this one, for external rotation, you can come right up against the patient. You can use a pillow if you're uncomfortable um, placing your chest against the patient, and then you're going to overpress this way. You can also just do one at a time if you want to do it this way as well. Okay, good. And now I'm going to have you swing around so your back is toward the group. Okay, and then we're going to check internal rotation. So I want you to reach up behind you. Good. So what I can do here is, again, just give some over pressure this way. Bring her up into internal rotation. Then I'm going to have you reach across this way. And then I can add some over pressure into adduction this way. And now bring your um, back of your hand away from you. And then into extension. And I can over press this way. Okay? Good. I'm going to have you turn back around. Now, if the patient has full range of motion, all planes with active range of motion and overpressure, do you need to do passive range of motion? No. So don't waste your time doing it. But if you go through and you find that they're limited in one or several planes of motion, then you definitely need to check passive range of motion. So I'm going to ask you to lie on your back with your head here. Make sure that the pillow is not blocking her shoulder. So for flexion, I'm just going to bring her back this way and make sure you can really get into that end range of motion. Okay, for abduction, if I want to isolate just the glenohumeral joint, then I'm going to stabilize from the scapula here and I'm going to bring her just to 90 degrees and that's true glenohumeral joint abduction. If I want to see how the scapula is kicking in, then I can turn her palm up and come all the way around, possibly this way. That's scapular, you said? Mm-hmm. Blending humeral and scapular motion. So you just put it up it that way. For external rotation, I always make sure that the arm, the weight of the arm is supported on the table. You can even use a little towel roll to keep the humeral head parallel. And then you're going to just support <coughs> the blending humeral joint as you bring her down into external rotation. You want to make sure that you can go end range, though. So you don't want to have her so much on the table that the table's blocking. Okay? You want to be able to see how far you can take her. And then internal rotation, you just change your position. And what I'm doing here is my arm is here, so in case she gets apprehensive and I feel you know, her joint kicking up under my arm and I, I said she's apprehensive or she has pain, I can almost do that relocation with it. But I don't want to necessarily block the movement. I'm watching to see really when her scapula is kicking up and when she's rolling this way and compensating. Because <coughs> remember, true glenohumeral is before the scapula kicks in. Okay? And then passively, horizontal adduction, bringing the thumb across the midline here. And then horizontal adduction, scoot toward me, please. And just supporting this way and bringing her down. Okay? So let's just go through those motions active with overpressure and then.